Greetings, Dumelang, Apsheni, San Bonani. You are watching Healing Sessions with your boy, Lee Dukshanizi, a.k.a. Fenty Grande, Fenty Lala. Healing Sessions is a show all about mental illness, mental state, trauma, things that we go through on a daily basis. So our guest today is Monica Norki, and a, she is one of the people who's been abandoned by her parents as a young age. She's an orphan. So welcome, Monica. How are you? Hi, I'm great. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. It's only an honor to have you, ma'am. So uh, tell us more about yourself, Monica, and your story. So um, my story starts. Um, my biological mother, mm -hmm. I was born on seven months. Mm -hmm. And um, when I was seven months old, um, my biological mother took me out of hospital. Mm. And I was on water for two weeks. And then she decided to abandon me at, at the dustbins. Okay. And that's when the police found me. They gave me over to Child Protection Services. And they took me to a place of safety. Okay. Um, at the place of safety, my mom and I have now, my adoptive parents, mm -hmm. At that time, they were um, the people who took care of the place of safety. So it was it was their establishment. And they took in all the abandoned children, and then they gave them homes. But I was a very sick baby because I was two months on water, uh, two weeks on water. Sorry about that. Mm -hmm. And um, so I was not fully developed yet because I was only born on seven months. Yes. So I was a very sick baby. And then at the end, they decided that they're going to keep me. And they can adopt me, even if all the doctors said it was not, there's no use, you can't save her. Um, they they had faith. We're a very religious family. Yes. And they said that God gave them this baby and that I'm going to live. And I did. So I'm really, really grateful for them. Today, they are my parents. And yeah, I have had an amazing childhood. They took care of me like I'm their own daughter. And my mom always say that, I wasn't born out of a womb, but I was born out of a heart. So yes. that really meant a lot to me. Those are very inspirational words. So, Monica, um, tell me how was your childhood and how is your family arrangement? It was just you and your parents. Yes. Um, my parents have their own children. They have three of their own children. Mm -hmm. So at the time I was adopted, um, only one of them still lived at home. That was my brother that's closer to me in age. Mm -hmm. And um, so he also basically, made, yeah, he made ready to leave home as well. Mm. So I basically grew up alone. Um, there is huge age, age gaps between me and my, my siblings, my adoptive siblings. Yes. And so I grew up alone with my mom and my dad. And I got a very close bond with my mother. Yes. Um, so my childhood was, was very nice. They say I was, I'm very spoiled. I was very spoiled. Um, and they took care of me a lot. So, yeah. Okay. And then I heard you started in, so tell me about your tertiary life. How was that since you started in the University of Pretoria? I heard. Yes. So before I went to University of Pretoria, I started my law journey mm -hmm. at the University of the Free State in Bloemfontein okay. because of all the things I had to deal with in Rustenburg, the friends and all the bullying and everything. Yes. So I decided to go as far as possible from Rustenburg as I could. Um, I spent three years there studying LLA, LLB law. Yes. And then I transferred to Pretoria because my mom got sick. She got a heart disease mm -hmm. and I wanted to be closer to home. So I am finally currently in my final year of law. So I'm hoping to pursue my LLM next year. So emotionally, how was your tertiary life? Like since you said you were bullied, I heard in your story, you talked, you specified something that you were bullied. Emotionally, how did that affect you? Um, emotionally, it was quite hard on myself mm. um, because of the circumstances and where I come from. Mm. I was always looking for acceptance and especially in friends. Mm. I kind of felt often that I stand out. I found like felt like an outcast yeah. and emotionally I felt like people didn't want to fully accept me. They wanted to accept me, but at the same time they had their own 
motives yes. for why they wanted to be friends with me. Yes. Um, they never truly really invited me in. Um, during high school, I, I had an experience where I had friends, friends, and then they would invite me to things, but then they would make their own WhatsApp groups, and then they would go on their own and basically just do things without me. So, yeah, so I felt really isolated. And um, I got depression in the 11th grade. And that was that was quite a dark time for me to go through, especially in your, your grade 11 years, kind of a pivotal year, you know, it just kind of determines everything. And um, I was depressed in my 11th year. And yeah, I had to go to a, to a psychiatrist and almost had to go on, on medicine, on uh, pills. And my mom was like, no, she, she doesn't want me to go on antidepressants. Um, I'm quite young to yes. go on that. And she said, once you go there, you, you don't go back. So um, it changed in university um, because I met new people and um, I really felt, felt accepted. Um, my first year was amazing. Your first year experience in res is really amazing. Yes, yes, and yes. then in my second year, yeah, in my second year, um, I wanted to stand for... Um, one of the house committee members yeah. and we had a circus where um, they put you up on stage and then they ask you questions on why you want to take this position on and yeah I felt really really victimized at yes. that point and that's why I just saw like whoa these people I've shared a house with now for like a year and then suddenly they just turn against you yeah. so that was very emotional um, trauma experience for me to go through. And that eventually made me decide to leave residence life. Um, I just felt like they say they're your sisters, but they turned against. Uh, thank you very much, Monica. That's a very interesting story. So where do you live right now currently? Uh, where is your life at at this point? Currently, I live in Pretoria. Mm -hmm. I live in my own apartment. I'm busy with my final year of law at the University of Pretoria. Okay. And then I, I heard from your story that you were somewhere overseas in Los Angeles. How was that experience? Uh, <laughs> I haven't gone yet. Okay. I, I'm still going. I okay. want to pursue my master's degree next year in Los Angeles. Okay. So you want to next year? And then what would yes. you tell... What would you tell uh, a young girl or a young boy or somebody who's going through depression? Uh, what advice would you give the person to get through that stage of depression? Sure. Um, what helped me through my depression is my support system. Okay. I had a really good support system. And the best thing you can do when you're depressed is to not retreat into your shell. Yes. It's really to allow people to help you. Um, to allow people to reach out to you and yeah, just to support you. That is what helped me. My my dad and my mom and we had I had really great family friends and they really took care of me. So yeah, so ne don't don't be alone. We really okay. rather go look for support. Okay, so Monica, um, since you you you've been studying, are you still kind of what what's your mission and your focus right now? So currently, um, my main focus now is to get this degree, this LLB degree, and also to secure funds for my LLM next year okay. at Loyola Marymount University in Los Angeles. Um, the reason I'm studying law is because I want to help people. Um, I want to actively participate to change, and law is such an amazing tool to allow that change yes. to happen. So you're really a person for change, queen of change, basically. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, so if, if my listeners and everybody wants to get a hold of, of you on socials and they want to get interactive with you, how can they find you there? So I have a YouTube channel. Okay. So um, you can find me at um, Monica Norkia, my YouTube channel. And then you can find me on Facebook. I have a Facebook page that is also Monica Norkia. And you can find me on Instagram at Monica since 96. Okay. And then 
your your main achievements that you have achieved achieved at the moment? Uh, at the moment, I must say my biggest achievement is getting into the master's program in yes. America. Yes. Um, because of my circumstances, I did not see that happening yes. at all. Um, because of South Africa, we grew up so isolated and focused on our own country and on opportunities in our own country. Yes. We don't really pursue other opportunities. So to get into this program is so far my greatest achievement yet. Okay, I just wanted to know on your YouTube panel, channel, what is your YouTube channel telling us about Monica? My YouTube channel is telling you guys everything about me. Hmm. I'm very passionate about living life and going on new adventures and new experiences. And I love acting. So I have a skit, uh, like a comedy skit on my channel where you can follow me. I'm a very funny character okay. and she just tells you a bit about her life and yeah, I'll just tell you about my life and everything I'm up to basically. And then what inspired all this YouTube channel and acting? Where, where does this heart come from? <laughs> um, I have been driving my parents mad basically since forever with yes. acting yes. and drama. Yes. And my mom always used to call me a drama queen. Um, <laughs> my parents say, since a young girl, I was very dramatic about everything. Yes. And so they said that the stage is definitely where I belong. Yes. And um, so, yeah. So, obviously, a drama degree um, does not allow you a stable opportunity. It does not allow you a stable job. So that's why I decided to pursue law. And now I'm going to combine my law and um, my acting by pursuing the LLM in entertainment law and new media. And the YouTube channel just really came from lockdown. I was bored and I wanted something <laughs> to do. Stuck in the house, you know, with my parents and I just started my YouTube channel. Yeah. So yeah. That sounds like a very interesting story. Um, what is your biggest challenge right now? Right now, my biggest challenge I'm facing is as amazing as this opportunity is to go overseas, mm. I don't have the funds to go overseas. Um, lockdown hit us all hard. My mom had to close down her business. And right now, my father is our sole provider. And mm. that is a lot of money. So I really have to be dependent on people's sponsorships to really make my dreams come true. Yeah. So, and if you were to give um, uh, a perspective of what would you change in the world? What's the one thing you would change in the world if you had the power to? If I had the power to, I know everybody wants to do this. Yes. I would really want to change the way people see one another. Mm. Um, there's so many inequality in this yes. country, yes. in this world, actually. Yes. Yes. Um, I'm a strong believer in women's rights and I believe that women are often underestimated and treated unfairly, especially in the industry, in the entertainment industry. And just, I think in all walks of life, women are just always underestimated. Yeah. And um, what I want to achieve with this degree is to make the world a more equal place, the industry, the entertainment industry, more equal for women and really, yeah just more equal and for justice to really get served. Um, and I want to do this by this degree. But I get it because you're already in the justice system. So obviously you're going, you're going to change a lot of things. <laughs> um, so this, the, 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 the whole acting, the lawyer, you being such an amazing person and also going through depression and all these riffraffs that are happening in, in your life as well. If you were to tell them, Monica, in the beginning, beginning, beginning of your journey, what would you, what would you tell that, Monica? Um, I would tell that, Monica, that people's opinions doesn't matter. Mm. Um, and acceptance from people doesn't matter either. Mm. You should just be your own person and you should just ensure that your light shines as bright as it could possibly can or could. Yeah. Yeah. That's a very amazing story. Thank you very much, Monica. <laughs> I just wanted to ask you a question. Um, words of 
encouragement out there to people around the world? Um, words of encouragement I would give someone is to never let anyone dull your sparkle. Um, if you have even just a little bit of talent, go out there and yes. chase your dreams. Anything is possible yes. if you believe. Yes. That was an amazing story. <laughs> Thank you very much, Monica. It was a pleasure being Thank you on so the much. show. Hopefully, we can send your story out there and let the world hear about this amazing <laughs> lady. Thank you very much, Monica. Thank you very much, listeners. We're going to catch you again next week, same time, same place, with your boy, the Duke Shilonizi, a.k.a. Fenty Grande. All I'm doing is saying bye and cheers. Check you next time. Thank you, Monica. Bye. bye.